Uh, J.M. DiMatteis. Oh, thank you, sir. So we brought you I've been here saying today. your name wrong for years. What have you been saying? You might be I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna no. tell you. Well, because it's pronounced two different ways. There's Dematis and Dematis. I said neither of those. Oh, okay, then you I apologize. Wrong. <laughs> completely wrong. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm terrible. That's okay. No, it's a hard name if you just read it. It's hard, it's hard to know. Well, um, how has your approach to Constantine for animation been different than your approach to characters like him in comics? You know, it's not that different. You know, when you, when you, I, I, you know, I, I, I've, I've worked in comics, I've written books, I've done animation, I've done live action, and the form is different. You know what I mean? The structure is different. Uh, the way, you know, the way a thing is formatted is different. But at, at its root, story is story, and character is character. So I can follow that character from the comics, and and uh, and bring it into animation. And it really wasn't a challenge because once you lock into the character, once you understand the character. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it in animation or whether you're doing it in comic. The way you tell the story may be different, but the heart and soul of the story is the same. For you, what's the strength of this character, of Constantine? The appeal of writing it, and also I'm curious about why you think it's connecting with people the way it does this character. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the second half first. Why is it connecting? Why is anything ever connected? Who knows? You know, it's it's. I, I think it's a. Uh, I could give you a lot of reasons. It's like you know, well, why was Star Trek so popular? Or why is Harry Potter so popular? Like Harry Potter, it's a great series of books, but there are lots of other really interesting you know, young adult fantasy novels that never clicked in the same way. Um, so I can't answer that question. Um, but in terms of what appeals to me, I like characters where there's a push and pull, where there is a real split and a dichotomy. And Constantine is a very, very hard edged guy. He's very cynical, he's very dark, he's very funny. But at the core of him, this is a guy who time and again is putting himself on the line. Uh, on the side of the light and on the side of the good, you know what I mean? So it's a great contrast between this guy who on one level is a total bastard and on another level is, you know, hidden away under the skin is this idealist in a lot of ways. I, I was saying on the panel that I keep, I'm a big Beatles fan, I keep thinking about John Lennon, who, you know, was this hard, like constant, this hard-edged kid from Liverpool, always getting into trouble, really cynical, really funny, really nasty. And yet he was the biggest idealist on two feet. And those two things pulling at him is what made him interesting. And that's what appeals to me about Constantine. Now, uh, Matt has been with this character for a while now in all different stuff, you know, versions, uh, yeah. Arrow, Legends. Uh, so, in developing this installment, this animated series, uh, was, was there did, uh, conversations with Matt? Did you go like, okay, Constantine wouldn't do that, or he would do this, or maybe we shouldn't put that in there for him? Or... Um, I had no conversations with Matt. I met Matt, Matt for the first time today, so, oh, you know. Oh, okay, I'm that. We, I'm a writer, I work in glorious isolation, and then I have a bunch of other people on the phone, producers and whatever, people from the network giving notes. So all the back and forth and the feedback is with them. Mm. And uh, and so I, I didn't have an interaction with them, uh, about this. And I have to say on this project, I don't think there was one time anyone said, no, that's not Constantine, that's, he wouldn't do that, change that, fix that, you know? Mm. All the notes, what I loved about, and I, I said this on the panel too, the, but in this process, the note process sometimes can be the hardest part because you get these notes and you don't, sometimes you don't necessarily agree with them and you have to find a way to input them and still be true to your story that you're telling. All the notes I got on this project were fantastic. Really? They were about, let's make, let, let's, let's deepen, deepen the characters even more. Let's make the stakes, let's make the story much more important for Constantine, say, than it was. And it was, the graphic novel was a fantastic story. It was a great foundation. But the stakes for Constantine personally were not that high in the graphic novel. In this story, as you see when it plays out, the stakes for him are really, really high. And without giving too much away, he pays quite a price at the end, you know? So it's a great journey for him. And that's the notes were always to push me to do more in that direction, which is my favorite thing to do. So, had a blast with it. Thank you. Did you get any inspiration from the Constantine TV series or pick up on anything? Well, the that? real inspiration from the series is this guy, is Matt. Because I was saying as we were walking over here, I think there were two totally brilliant pieces of comic to film casting. One is Robert Downey Jr. and the other one is him. It's like perfect. And when I remember seeing first seeing, and it's not just the, the, the way he plays it, he looks like he walked right out of the book. So he's, he plays it perfectly and he completely looks the part. You know, I know Robert Downey Jr. didn't really look like Tony Stark in the comics to me, but he's, he played it so beautifully he made that character his own. But he does both, you know, he really plays it beautifully and it's like, the, like he literally stepped out of a panel. So uh, it's great. We know that the the series, the animated series, is um, separate from the what we've seen of Constantine in the right. live action show and Arrow and Legends. Was there ever an attempt to kind of 
pulled the two of them together, or was it the director no, of Off I, the Bat? They might have talked about it, you know, at the okay. network, but no one ever addressed that with me. It was just like, let's do a great story, and let's not worry about anything else. I, I don't think there's anything in this story, say, that could contradict what's going on, certainly in the Arrowverse, you know? So it might be all of a piece there. You do have a completely different chest, though, am I right? Both than than the live action yes, series, but yes. I don't know if the Constantine that's on Legends is the same Constantine that was on that live action series on NBC. Mm. Yeah, you know, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. I wonder if Matt even knows at this point. It was all these different incarnations of Constantine. Now he was saying how interesting it is for him to play it because he's played it one way on the live action. There's the animation. Now he's doing it in the Arrowverse. And I want you know where did they cross over? They could do a crossover with three different Constantines in the crossover. You know? I'm sure Matt would love that. <laughs> he probably would. So, uh, for when you were writing this, did they? Because they, it was like five minute uh, episodes. Did yeah, they, they're like five to eight minutes each, I think. How did you handle that as a writer? Were you like, this is a solid act break, or...? Well, here, the great thing was that we knew that's what they were going to do with it down the line, but I was told to just write it as a feature. Okay. And, you know, think in the back of my mind about places where it might break, but really I, I wrote it, uh, all of the piece, and then after the fact we discussed where would be good places to break it. And if a story is structured right, there's always going to be these peaks, and, you know, a scene's going to end on a certain high note, which is always a great place to cut something. So, and I thought they, what they finally decided and worked out and cut it was they did a beautiful job breaking this up. Because when I first thought, they just going to chop this up and make it work, and they, and they did, and it really, really works. Hey, thanks, I'm sorry I have to call yeah, sure. but we'll be bringing